Today is Halloween. And, you know, in preparation for Halloween to get into the spirit, I watched a couple of uh, horror movies. I'm not a big horror movie guy, but I did watch a couple of them. The one of them, one of them that I'm going to talk about today is Halloween Kills. It continues on the story of the previous Halloween movie, which I did watch, and I want to talk about it. Now, Halloween Kills um, was released a couple of weeks ago. It was released. It is now vi available to go to the theaters and watch it, or you can stream it watching on uh, the Peacock Plus service. Um, Peacock Plus is a service that I haven't really used that much until recently because there's a couple of movies that I watched that was on that service. It stars Jamie Lee Curtis, and it continues in the story that pretty much in the previous Halloween movie, which I did see, it just continues completely, like almost exactly after that movie ends. If you've seen the previous Halloween movie, you know that at the end of that movie, they set up a trap for, for Michael Myers and they kind of trapped him in the basement of the house and set the house on fire. And of course, we all thought that that was the end of Michael Myers. He burnt up in the fire. Of course, at the beginning of this movie, you find out immediately that that is not true. Um, the firefighters come to put the fire out of the house. And when they go down and try to put the, they're in the house trying to fight the fire, all of a sudden you realize Michael Myers is there. And then he starts wreaking havoc along the city all over again. I'm not going to do any spoilers other than that part, which that part is a spoiler, which that has something like that has to happen for there to be another movie. Okay. So what did I think about this movie? I had a moderate amount of fun with this movie. One thing that kind of kind of threw me off at the beginning is right at the beginning, they had a flashback. They kind of did like a background little story. I don't know if they, you know, I don't even remember Halloween one and two. I remember what my history with Halloween is that I never watched these movies. I've usually seen the Friday the 13th movies and my favorite series out of these type of horror slasher movies was Nightmare on Elm Street. So those were the ones that I've really watched. I remember years and years and years ago, I was looking at, you know, I had watched a couple of the Jason movies and then I had rewatched all of the um, Nightmare on Elm Street movies. And I was like, let me check out Halloween. Back then this was video store type stuff. So when I went to the video store to get the movie, the only one that was available was Halloween three and I watched it and I thought it was horrible. I was like, why in the world do people like this movie? I don't even see it. I don't, where is Michael Meyer? I mean, I don't get it. You know, I just thought it was horrible. Nowadays, if I watch it, knowing the history of the Halloween franchise a little bit, I might have a different view on it. Maybe I'll give it a rewatch one day, but I remember back then just watching that and it kind of threw me off of the whole Halloween series because I think that one didn't even have Michael Myers in it. It was like a completely different story that had nothing to do with what Halloween 1 and Halloween 2 was about. So that kind of threw me off. Now, I didn't get back into the Halloween series until later on, until later movies. Um, I saw the one that had LL Cool J in it. Then I seen the most recent one. Well, not the most recent one, but the one previous to the most recent one, Halloween Kills, the one that came out before that, and I saw this one. I think I did see one a couple years ago, a couple years back, that was directed by Rob Zombie, I want to say. I might have that wrong. If I do, let me know in the comments below, but I want to say it was directed by Rob Zombie, and it was kind of like a reboot of the series or whatever, and it was okay. You know, all of these movies, I've kind of felt the same way. I felt like they were okay. They're entertaining for, for a specific reason. They're entertaining when you want to watch a slasher film. Um, but if you want to watch a good movie, I wouldn't necessarily say these types of movies would be your choice. But I got off on a tangent. Um, the thing that threw me off at the beginning is they did a flashback, you know, a flashback that took you back to way back. And I guess something happened and Michael Myers killed a couple of people and the police kind of surrounded him and arrested him. They kind of gave you a story of how he got arrested years ago. I don't know why they did that flashback. It kind of threw me off. Um, it wasn't that long, but it told like its own little complete story within about a good five minutes or so. But it kind of threw me off because I'm like, what's going on? What is this? You know, what is this movie? And then it jumps back into present day, the movie's present day. And that's where it picks up where it left off from the last movie and it got back on track. And, and you know, when they did that flashback, you know, the only reason they did that flashback is so that they can say, OK, these characters in this movie are these characters that was in the flashback. It's like the only reason they had that flashback is to introduce those characters or remind you of those characters, as I don't know if they are characters from previous movies or not, you know. But yeah, that's what they did. And it kind of threw me off. It kind of took me out of the movie, even though it was OK. It was an interesting flashback. But in the whole scheme of things, when I'm look ready to see what's going to happen to Michael Myers now, it kind of 
threw me off a little bit. Not much, but just a little bit. Kind of confused me a little bit, but, but it jumped back into the movie. And then I was like, okay, here we go. As the movie goes on, of course, it's typical Halloween slasher type stuff. You know, Michael Myers is going around killing people. I never did find out what his goal was. And I guess you don't necessarily need to have a goal. I don't know if he had a goal or not. I know throughout the movie, they thought he had one goal. And then later on, they kind of switched it and was like, well, maybe that wasn't his goal. You have to watch it to see what I'm talking about. And in this movie, if you look at the trailers, they kind of frame it as a way where in this movie, Michael Myers is the one being hunted, not his victims. And they kind of they kind of tried to play that. You know, the townspeople, you know, all of these people that had history um, of being terrorized with Michael Myers, their family being terrorized or killed by Michael Myers. All of these people decided that tonight is the night Michael Myers die. And they kind of went out looking for him instead of him being the one hunting down people and killing people. They kind of did that a little bit. You know, it was kind of a little bit of a both. You know, it's kind of like two sides to this story where they part of it where they focused on the people that was looking for Michael Myers. And then the other part of it was where they had Michael Myers walking around doing Michael Myers stuff, you know. And that was kind of interesting. I kind of wanted to see um, how this was going to turn out. It was almost satisfying at the end, but not quite. I don't know. I, I was always kind of skeptical about the people that were after him. I mean, they had reasons and, and I felt for them. I could feel for their reasons and I can feel for their motives for wanting to go do, do this. But the people themselves, I never believed that they would ever achieve their goal. You know, um, they just didn't seem like very capable people to do what they wanted to do. But, you know, there's strength in numbers and that comes into play at the end. And, you know, if you came in there to see Michael Myers kill some people, you know, scare them and kill them and chase them around and a bunch of people screaming uncontrollably for no reason at all. If you wanted to see that, this movie would satisfy that for you. It's Halloween. So, of course, you want to see if you're in the Halloween mood, mood and you want to see some stuff that fit the theme of Halloween, of course, the name of the movie is Halloween Kills, and it does satisfy that. Now, if you want to see a good movie, if you want to see a movie where you walk away from and be like, oh, that was a good movie, you won't get that here. But that's not to say you won't have fun with it. Um, you just got to know what you're looking for. You got to watch this movie knowing that what you're going to get is something fun. For the holiday, to be in the holiday vibe of Halloween, you know, being that today is Halloween and you want to watch spooky, scary Halloween type stuff, I feel, I feel like it fits. You know, I feel like it fits that mode if you're looking for that. By the time you see this video, Halloween probably may have come and gone and you might not be in that mode anymore, but it's still worth a watch, even if you're not necessarily in a Halloween mode. If you just want to see a slasher, you know, it's still worth a watch for that. Um, but that's Halloween Kills. And I would say I had a little bit of enjoyment. You should check it out if you like those type of movies. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Congratulations. You made it to the end of the video. While you're here, why don't you check out that video right there? Or maybe that one right there. And while you're at it, go ahead and uh, click that, that little picture of my image there and subscribe to my channel.